Well, thank you, Christ Corners. Thank you, Mike, for inviting me. It's an honor to be here this morning. And I want to share with you guys an interesting story from the Bible today. It is, oops, it is found in 1 Chronicles 13, 1 to 14. Very, very interesting story. It may seem a little controversial at first, but I assure you that I will clarify everything so that you may understand that God is always in control of all things. 1 Chronicles 13, 1 to 14. I think, Rob, you might have to help me with the... Uh... Well, that's it. all right. Here we go. I didn't, I didn't touch anything, but, but that's good. We want to begin there. Um, I'm going to ask if you would be so kind and stand as I read the verses there. 1 Chronicles 13. From 1 to 13, it says, David conferred with each of his officers, the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds. He said to the whole assembly of Israel, if it is good to you and if it is the will of the Lord God, let us send word from far and wide to rest to the rest of our brothers throughout the territories of Israel and also to the priests and the Levites who are with them in their towns, pasture lands, to come join us. Let us bring the ark of God back to us. For we did not inquire of it during the reign of Saul. The whole assembly agreed to do this because it seemed right to all the people. So David assembled all the Israelites. The Shehor from the river in Egypt to Lebo. Hamath to bring the ark of God from kiriath Jerim. David and all of the Israelites with him went to Bala of Judah to bring up the ark of God, or our Lord, who is enthroned between the cherubim, the ark that was called by name. My verse 7 now. They moved the ark from God, of God, from Abinadab's house on a new cart with Uzzah and Ahio guiding it. David and the Israelites were celebrating with the, all their might before God with songs, with the harp, with the lyre, with the tambourines, cymbals, and trumpets. Let me see if I can find that one. There we go. I want. Whoops. There we go. That's a better picture of, of what's happening. When they came to the threshing floor of Kidon, Uzzah reached out his hand to steady the ark because an oxen stumbled. The Lord's anger burned and against Uzzah, and he struck him down because he had put his hand on the ark. So he died before God. Then David was angry at the Lord, at the Lord's wrath, and had broken out against Uzzah. And to this day, the place is called Perez Uzzah. Verse 12, David was afraid of God that day and asked, How can I ever bring the ark of God to me? He said, Do not take the ark to be with him in the city of David. Instead, he took it aside to the house of Obedidom, the Hittite. The ark of God remained with the family of Obedidom in his house for three months, and the Lord blessed the household and everything he had in it. Uh, you may be seated. Dear God, we lift up your name one more time, Lord. Father, we look at your scripture, we look at this word, and we pray. I pray now as the Holy Spirit works in our minds and in our hearts to understand this word, and above all, that we might draw closer to you and closer to the understanding of who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so we have this scenario here. That there's a kind of picture there, you know, if you, if you can see it well. But I, I believe this morning is not a coincidence that uh, Kevin spoke of a covenant. See, and I looked at my wife and I go, this is just confirmation. They were speaking of the Ark of the Covenant, and he spoke of the covenant we have today with Christ. Covenant is, you know, that, that deal that we made. It's a promise God made to us and us in return to him. It begins here with this. The Ark of the Covenant is the golden box that God told the people way back, you know, Moses' days to build. And the box was wooden, but it was covered in gold inside and out. The top was pure gold with two angels facing each other, kind of representing the throne of God. And for the people of Israel, this, this ark represented God's presence 
and God power, God's power with them. And God says, basically, in really simple terms, I'm going to be with you as long as you follow my commandments. I'm going to be with you. And you'll have access to my presence and my power in, in this scenario. But as we're reading this story, at some point in time, when King Saul was king, he disobeyed God, he was disobedient, whatever the case may be, the ark was lost because Saul was not following God's plan accordingly, and it was taken away from Israel. Those people who took it suffered some really strange things, diseases and things, and they sent it back. But when it came back, it didn't go directly to Jerusalem. Someone, one of the Jews took it and just kept it in his house because they were still afraid of, of the, the consequences behind it. But it comes a time when King David says, hey, we need to bring that thing back home. It belongs in, the king, in God's kingdom. It belongs, you know, the church, the king should be handling that. So he, he goes to do this. And he, this is where we are in this story. Sometimes what seems right to us at that moment in time, might not be right for God. And this is what we're looking at here. David wanted to do a good thing. It's, this is a really good thing that he wants to do. He wants to return the ark back. But let me show you again, if you have the scripture with you, his first mistake. First Chronicles 13, 1. I'm just going to read the first four verses. David conferred with his officers. The commanders of thousands, commanders of hundreds. He said to the whole assembly of Israel, if it's good for you guys, if it's good for you, and if it's the will of the Lord, let us send word far and wide to the rest of our brothers throughout the territories of Israel, the priests, the Levites, the townspeople, the pasture lands. He basically is saying to everyone, let's bring the ark back. Um, we haven't done it since Saul, is what he's saying. Verse 4. The whole assembly agreed to do this because it seemed right to the people. Nowhere there does it say David prayed to God. They did it because, hey, it seemed right. Hey, what do you think? Everybody was saying, yeah, yeah, this is great. This is right. At no time there does it say, hey, how about praying to God and asking him what he wants? That's the first mistake. It says, verse 4. The whole assembly agreed to this because it seemed right to the people. Awesome. You know, he's got the, the what do you call it, the political, not the, the popular vote. That's what it's called. The popular vote. Everybody's agreeing with it. Just because the whole world agrees doesn't mean it's right. He didn't seek God. That was his first mistake. As we go through this. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In my understanding, hey, this is a great idea. Wait a minute. Let me go to the Bible. Let me look and see what God says about this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways. It doesn't say in some of your ways. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He'll make your path straight. And the problem with us as people is a lot of times we say, oh, I'm going to trust God with my marriage. I'm going to trust God with my job. But this one particular area right here, I'll handle that one myself. You know, watch out. It says with all things. I remember this guy told me one time, man, somebody got in my face. I was so mad. I was going to take off my Christian jacket. And I was like, what are you? You can't do that. You don't, it's not a jacket you wear. Right? We serve God. We live for God 2407. All right? And many times that means just biting our tongue and taking it as Christ did. Amen? David did not acknowledge God. He got everyone's opinion except God's. And that was his, his first, first mistake. I have, uh, there we go, Blue. Anybody see Rio too? Right? Blue the bird here. In Rio too, Blue's in a situation that his tribe, let's say, the, the Blue McCall's, are playing against the red, the red birds there. And they're in a situation, they're in the game, the game is basically for all the land that they live in. And Blue jumps in and Blue is on, in, in the zone, right? He's playing, he's in the zone. 
he has the he has the ball in this case. It's an it's a it's a wall, not an acorn. But you know he's playing soccer, and he has it, and he's going on, and his teammates are going, "Hey, pass it over here, pass it over here." Roberto, who's like the greatest player ever, is like, "Pass it to me, Blue." And Blue doesn't listen because he feels like he's in the zone. I got this, and he's you know he's doing his fancy footwork and everything. And then he does a nice little upside down flip, and he kicks the nut, or in this case the ball, into the goal. Yeah, Blue's like, "Yeah, awesome." but he kicked it into the wrong goal. So instead of winning the game that he thought he was doing this amazing thing, he loses the game for his team. And that's kind of like the scenario here. He thinks he's doing something good. He thinks. And in his mind, he was totally convinced that this is the way to go, and he does it. But he didn't listen to anybody else. He did his own thing, and man, he blew it. At first we wonder, how could God strike this guy down? Let me go back to the, let me go back to the, the there he is on the ground. There. How could God strike this guy, Uzzah, down? He was only trying to do the right thing. The cart was falling, he went to try to steady it. Right? I mean, he's, he's trying to do what's right. But then we have to go back to what I told you in the beginning. The Ark of the Covenant it's not just an ordinary box. The Ark of the Covenant, remember, represents God's presence, God's power. And God had established a certain order as to how to treat this thing. In Numbers 4.15, God tells the, his people, Numbers 4.15, going back a few chapters, no one is to touch the Ark Unless they die. They were already given that instructions before. God has established an order and a way he wants things done. He gives us these instructions here. In this book. Mine has a little tape. Ignore that. All right. But in this book, he gives us instructions. Luckily today, like no one has an excuse you have apps now. You can have your Bible with you all day long. It's just a Bible app. <laughs> Access it and read your Bible every day. But we have that instruction of God. The ark there, you see, the priests would go and they would confer with God. They would seek direction of God. They would turn around and they would come back to the people and say, hey, this is what, this is what God wants. So God has established an order. A way he wants things does, he gives us the instructions. And if we don't follow his instructions properly, then we know there's consequences. As we see there. Even if all our intentions are good, we must be careful that our actions do not violate God's command. Let's read on in, in 1 Chronicles 13. I left off on verse 4. So David assembled all the Israelites, the Shiite river, uh, all the people to bring back the ark. David and the Israelites and the uh, Bala of Judah to bring the ark back that is enthroned in the cherubim. The ark is called by name. They move the ark. Uh, everybody's celebrating. Verse 9, when they came to the threshing floor of Kedon, Uzzah reached out, touched it. The Lord's anger burned against them. He, he did this process wrong. And then if you look at verse 11, then David was angry because the Lord's wrath had broken out against Uzzah. To this day, the place is called Uzzah. I don't, I don't know if you guys can see this picture too well, but on the other side of where the oxen are, there's a guy with his hands up like this, like, what just happened? I would imagine that's David. Okay, and he freaked out because he's like, wait, and he, he is just like you and me. He's thinking, wait, God, what just happened here? We're doing something good. How could this go wrong? And, and at first, his first reaction is he gets upset. But then, verse 12, there's a total change in his attitude. David was afraid of God that day. All of a sudden, he said, hold on, guys. I think we messed up. And I love David in the Bible. If you ever follow his life, 
You know, he did some crazy stuff. But the great thing about David is when he would mess up, he would fess up. He, w- he was quick to go, wait a minute, I messed up. And he'd go right back to God. He'd go, God, I'm sorry, I messed up. And he'd try to fix it immediately. He would always seek in God like that. And, and here, he, all of a sudden, at first he got mad. He's like, wait a minute. And then he's, all of a sudden he's like, oh, I must have messed up somewhere. And I love him because since he's the king, he's, he's owning up to this. He's saying, you know what, this was my fault. And all of a sudden he backs up. And he, he was afraid of God. He's like, wait a minute. Man, that's not God's fault. That's my fault. And he backs up. And it says he was afraid of God that day. However, he, 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 he says, you know, I, I can't bring the ark back to the city. You know, I can't. I can't. There's, there's something wrong here. We need to take a time out. And he says... His first reaction, of course, you know, he was upset. Now he's afraid. Verse 13, he didn't take the ark back to Jerusalem with him. Instead, he took it to Obedidom, the Jihite, the Hittite's house. And I would imagine at that moment in time when he's thinking, hey, what are we going to do with this? Everybody's thinking, I don't want it. I don't want it. Don't send it to my house. You know, I have kids. They'll touch everything. I got two-year-olds. Anything you don't want them to touch, they're in it. You know, you can have a room full of toys, and they'll go right to the electrical socket. It was like, you know, you want to safety-proof a house? Put two-year-olds in there. They'll find anything that's wrong. So, you know, I would imagine everybody's like, no, don't bring that thing to my house. I won't take it. And finally, one guy steps up, and he says, hey, I'll, you know, I'll take it. Uh, hopefully, he lived nearby, <laughs> so no one else gets killed. You know, like, bring it to my house. It's right there. Uh, so he takes it. And uh, Obed the Hittite says, you know, bring it to me. He trusts God. He brings it with him. And it's an interesting thing about this guy in verse 14. The ark of God remained in the family of obed for three months. And it says the Lord blessed his household and everything he had. Obed probably said, hey, David, I'll take it. And he was probably very careful as to how he brought it home, where he put it and everything. And God is saying, okay, this guy gets it. This guy is showing me some respect. This guy understands that the things of God have to be treated carefully. And so God blesses him. And his home and his household, it says, he received God and he trusted God. And he is blessed. In in the meantime, for those three months, I believe David took a recess, prayed, seeked out God, and then he wanted to make things right. What can we learn from from this little story here? There's a few things. First, God is holy and powerful. And we need to understand that and approach him in that way. No matter how good our attentions may appear to people, We really have to seek out what God's will is first. And if you have any confusion about that, we go back to this. Luckily, we have something in writing to refer to and go back to and say, hey, let me see what the Bible says in reference to these things. If we decide to do our own things, even with the best intentions, but it's not in line with God's word, it's not in line with following Christ, As I mentioned, it's not right. Galatians 6, 7 and 8 says, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. The one who sows to please his sinful nature, from that nature will reap destruction. If We're doing it because, hey, this is gain for me. Even though this is a great thing, I'm doing it for the people, but really, it's all about me. God says, hey, guess what? You're on your way to destruction. The one who sows to please the Spirit of God, he will reap spiritual, eternal life. New Testament scripture. Finally, after a few months of praying and seeking God, if we go just a few chapters over, chapter 15, from 13 to 15. Chapter 15, and I'm getting close to concluding. It says... It was David gets together the priests 
and the Levites and everybody. And he says, hey, guys, okay, what, where did we go wrong? We've been seeking God. What happened? And here is the answer. First Chronicles 15, 13. It was because of you, the Levites. You did not bring up the ark the first time as the Lord. Be- and, wait, you did not bring up the, the ark the first time that the Lord God broke out in anger against us. You see in this picture right here, they're, they're pulling the ark with a couple of bulls. Some oxen, if you will. And it's on a cart. That's totally wrong. Let me find my, there we go. When God established the ark, he said, I want four priests to do it like this. No one's touching the ark, hence the long poles. And the priests were holy men. God is like, I don't want just any Joe carrying the the ark. It has to be men who are holy, men who are pure, men who have already been consecrated before me. I want them to carry it. Not an ox, not a bull. Is this cargo? You know, God is like, are you kidding me? Is this like a box you're taking into the, to the post office? No. All right? Show some respect. Show some reverence. This is the way it's to be done. And he gives them that order. So now they realize, whoa, wait a minute. We totally messed up. Continuing on uh, chapter 15. So the priests and the Levites consecrated themselves in order to bring up the ark of the Lord to Israel. 1515, and the Levites carried the ark of God with the poles on their shoulders, as Moses had commanded, in accordance to the word of the Lord. Hey, we went back to the basics. God, this is the way it's supposed to be done, guys. Wow. And they had to go right back. And they realized, hey. Where, where they messed up. I want to share with you guys a final illustration, and I'm going to close. Going back, how many, uh, for those of you who like sports, Roger Staubach, this is going back in the 70s, quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. He says when he was taken into the team, he had a really tough time. Because that particular team, the coaching staff made all the calls. The quarterback is the guy who's pretty much controlling the game. He throws the ball. He passes the ball, whatever. You know, so he's the guy who controls the game in, mo- in most cases. But on this particular team, Dallas Cowboys, he had to listen to the plays that were given to him by someone else. And he had to do what that someone else was telling him. In the beginning, he had a really tough time because he's like, man, I think we should go long here. And they would tell him, no, no, just pass the ball to the guy next to you. Let him run. And he had a tough time with that. And because he had a tough time with that, they were losing games. But he says, and I quote, when I faced up to the issue of obedience, once I learned to obey, there was harmony, there was fulfillment, there was victory. When he started listening to the plays that were given to him and he started doing what they told him, they reached the Super Bowl. They became Super Bowl champs. Because now there was a harmony. There was a flow. And so it is with us with God. God gives us his word. Again, it is here. God gives us the example of Jesus Christ. When we stop resisting that and start saying, hey, you know what, God, I'm going to do it your way. Even though it might not make sense to me at that moment in time. I'm going to do it your way. I'm going to follow you. Then we'll begin to see success, victory. I believe Christ Corners, this entity here, Christ Corners is where David was in this story. At a point where, hey, let's go back and reevaluate what's going on. I believe, and I count myself into this, we need to seek God, follow his word, and be obedient. And then we can begin to move forward. Amen? Amen. So that is my message for you this morning. God bless you. I hope that uh, we can all take that to heart. Amen? God bless you.